ஹலோ அண்ட் வெல்கம் டு மை சேனல் ஏடபிள்யூஎஸ் சொல்யூஷன் ஆர்கிடெக்ட் ப்ரொஃபஷனல் எக்ஸாம் இஸ் ஒன் ஆஃப் தி டஃபஸ்ட் எக்ஸாம் ஃபார் மெனி ஆஃப் அஸ் இன் திஸ் வீடியோ ஐ வில் டாக் அபவுட் ஹவு ஐ கிளியர்ட் தி எஸ்ஏ ப்ரொஃபஷனல் எக்ஸாம் ஐ வில் ட்ரை டு கிவ் யூ சம் டிப்ஸ் ஃபார் யுவர் ப்ரிப்பரேஷன்ஸ் ஹவு யூ கேன் பிளான் யுவர் ப்ரிப்பரேஷன் ஃபார் த எக்ஸாம் அண்ட் மோஸ்ட் இம்பார்ட்டன்ட்லி ஐ வில் ஆல்சோ டாக் அபவுட் த கீ டாபிக் ஏரியாஸ் ஃப்ரம் வேர் ஐ கோட் கொஸ்டின்ஸ் தட் வில் ஆல்சோ பி எ வெரி யூஸ்ஃபுல் டிப் ஃபார் யூ பிகாஸ் யூ கேன் இன் கேஸ் இஃப் யூ ஹேவ் இன் லுக் அட் எனி ஆஃப் தோஸ் டாபிக்ஸ் யூ கேன் இன்ஷூர் தட் யூ கவர் தோஸ் டாபிக்ஸ் ஓகே லெட் ஸ்டார்ட் த டிஸ்கஷன் Let me start this discussion with an unrelated topic that is about test driven development TDD some of you may have used it that is a software engineering technique where for your requirement you will write the test cases first and then you will write your code for passing those test cases in testing and finally you will get the software whatever you wanted so why i mentioned it here is while preparing for solution architect professional exam you can actually take an approach of practice test driven learning instead of going through hundreds of pages of reading material and lab exercises take some practice tests and analyze the answers especially the wrong answers you will understand the topic covered and the minute details about each topic you will be forced to refer to the corresponding documentation regarding each of those services documentation as well as the frequently asked questions and that will provide you with the right focused learnings and my suggestion is take at least 3 such full length tests and analyze the answers and take notes based on what are you find from the documentation and you will be done with your preparation so many of you may ask won't it impact your won't it limit your learnings no i don't think so see here we are not trying to by heart some formula and then try to reproduce it on the exam paper and then pass the exam that will not work for sa professional exam only if you understand the basics understand the details of the aw services which are covered then only you will be able to pick the right answers in the exam and clear the examination if you try to go through hundreds of pages of reading material and hundreds of lab exercises definitely it will improve your learning but then it is going to take a very long time and most of us do not have that amount of time for preparing for this examination of course during the exam preparation as well as after you clear the exam you can try to do a number of lab exercises and improve your learning that learning never stops but our objective here is to pass the exam so that's why i'm suggesting this method okay so where do we start do we just jump into the practice test or do we at least do some reading before that my suggestion is try to do a basic reading of the topics and i will suggest two materials for that i'll show you the sites and you can go through either of those documentation for maybe two days and then jump into the practice test okay let's see those two materials which i'm talking about okay now let's talk about the two different reading materials or the materials where you can start your preparations so there are two of them both of them can be accessed from this solution architect certification page you can search in google and reach here i will give the link in description as well so come to solution architect professionals page and come down you can see the details about the exam here but i'm sure you are aware of all these basic facts come down and uh, towards the end you have this exam guide sample questions practice questions and digital training so the two materials which i'm talking about is you can actually go to the exam guide you can click on this and here is the exam guide so again what i am talking about is before you start taking the practice test you can go through a basic reading material instead of spending too much time just skim through that so for that what i am suggesting is there are two documents or two training materials and the first one is the exam guide come to page number 15 of this and here we have in scope aw services and features go through this list and then just ensure that you know basic details okay not complete details about each of these services but if i say aws data exchange what is it you should be able to answer that for example data exchange is something which in general we may not come across this particular service but in fact in my exam i had a question about data exchange and if you come down you have things like app flow do you know what is app flow so please ensure that you understand the basic of each of the service you don't need to go into the detail that you will do later after going through the practice test i will give you a link to a white paper which actually describes in in brief each of these services 
that will be useful to you i will include that in the description okay so this is one method this is like five to six pages go through this and many of these database lambda you already know what it is what is fargate you know already know elastic beanstalk you already know so out of this maybe 80 percent you already know 20 percent please go through it and understand what it is this is the first method or alternatively what you can do is go back to the certification page and then you have this free digital training click on that you have to create a skill builder id and once you click on this you will be asked to enroll for that course i have already done that let me go to that page directly so when you come here you can see on the right side that uh, there are multiple chapters so if you have time go through everything it actually talks about exam style questions uh, what are the exam topics etc but the most important thing is module 4 prepare for the exam okay register for the exam etc i don't think you need to go through this this actually contains video lessons about the actual topics included in the exam so try to go through this the total course duration is 5 hours so if you take only module 4 it may be like Three to four hours so go through this as an alternative method either you can go through that exam guide or you can go through this preparation course so that will be your initial preparation it should not take more than two days that's what i would suggest now once you do that you can actually jump into the world of practice test so which are the practice tests there are many but i will talk about what i used So after going through the first round of preparation, what I did was I came back to the certification page. Here we have sample questions, 10 of them. So click on this. I have it here. There are 10 questions and go through it and then see if you can answer it. And if you are able to get say 5 out of 10, that is really good. The answers and explanations are given at the end. So you can see the explanation also. So just see if you can answer at least 5 out of 10 correctly, then that is really good, I would say. If you are able to get 8 out of 10, you are a genius just stop watching my video go ahead and write the final exam you should pass okay so after you complete this practice test or sample questions there is one more practice test given here you can do this at the end just before you are going for your final exam just take this test and there are 20 questions here whereas in the sample questions there are only 10 now which are the other tests available here i will suggest a few tests from udemy which i used but there may be other tests you can you can find out and then decide for yourself but let me take you to udemy and these are some of the sap practice tests out of this i used the second and third the first one i did not use first one is from neil davis i did not use it but i hear that that is also good you can try that i use the second and third one the second one from tutorial stojo has three full length practice tests with 225 questions whereas the third one from stephen marek has 210 questions so it is two full length tests plus a 30 question test so these are the two set of tests which i used and after this i went back to the certification page and i took this practice test as well now let me show you how much I scored in each of these exams. Let me show you how much I scored in each of the practice tests. In the sample questions, official set of sample questions, I could get only 6 out of 10 correct. So that was 60 percentage. Then I took the first practice test from Stephen Marek, which is only 30 questions. Out of that, I could get only 15 questions correct, 50 percentage. After each exam, I actually analyzed the answers, especially the wrong answers and took notes. So I kept on building my notes, which I actually started building it when I went through the initial practice material. And I went to the practice test 2 from Stephen Marek, which is full 75 questions. And I could get only 53% correct. Again, I did the analysis and I updated my notes. Then I did one test from Tutorials Dojo. There are three tests out of that, only one I took. And this one I scored 70%. So it looks like this was much easier than the Stephen Marek test. And then again, I went back to Stephen Marek, I did the third one and this time I scored 62 percentage and you can see that in none of these I have got the required 75 percentage. Then finally I did the official test and I scored 75 percentage there and I should say it was comparatively easier and finally I scored 75 percentage. At that point I pre-pawned my exam. I had actually planned the exam 10 days from that point but then I, I advanced it to two days from that point. And in the final exam, I actually scored 83%. And this has been my experience with other exams as well. Whatever you score in your practice test, you are able to score much more than that in the final exam. Now, after discussing about the practice test, I can hear some of you asking, okay, how much I should score in these practice tests to know if I am ready for the final exam?
So based on my own experience as well as my colleagues' experience, if you are able to get 60% in Stephen Marek test or 65% in the official test or the tutorials dojo test, I think you are ready for your final exam. Of course, I know 75% is the passing score for the final exam. But my experience is that if you are able to score 60 to 65% in these practice tests, you will be able to clear the exam with 75% score. And some of you may have this question, how much time you should allocate for preparing for SA professional exam? This is my suggestion. You can allow a period of one month for yourself to prepare. And during that one month, try to spend at least a couple of hours every day for preparing for this exam. That should suffice. Now, regarding the exam strategy and what I went through on the exam day, I just want to brief you about that before I jump into the question areas from where all I got the questions in my exam. If English is not your first language, you can actually claim 30 minutes extra time. And during the exam, in the first pass, I left 30 questions due to various reasons such as it was a multi-answer question or it was a too long question. So even without looking at the question, I just flagged it and moved on to the next question. And apart from that out of the 45 questions which I answered I had actually flagged 12 of them because I was not sure about the answers. After the first pass 90 minutes were remaining for answering the 30 questions plus the flagged 12 questions. Actually there were only two or three very long questions in the sense that I had to actually scroll down to see the answer choices. So there were only two or three such very long questions and there were around 13-14 questions with two answers and three to four questions with three answers. So I actually left it because since you have to choose multiple answers it used to take more time so I skipped it. So this is what I did in my exam. I'm not saying this is the right way to do but maybe some of these points you can also adopt. Now let us jump into the most important part. I got questions from which all topics. So I'm just giving the topic names, not for the details. There were several migration related questions. I remember database migration service, schema conversion tool, there was a question. Then application migration related, at least a couple of questions. Then application discovery service, there was a specific question where it was talking about the agentless application discovery service. Then there was a question which actually dealt with migration hub. In any certification exam, you will have a number of storage related questions. And here also I had S3 storage class, you had to actually choose between Glacier Deep Archive versus S3 in frequent access based on the question scenario. Then FSX for Lustre, there was a question then about setting up static websites and routing traffic using Route 53 to that web page. Then cross region replication, there was a question. Then EFS, there was a question where you have to choose between the general purpose and max IO modes. Snowball, there were two questions. Basically, in both the scenarios, you had to choose between using Snowball snowball versus directly transferring online but then you should know how to calculate how many days it will take for transferring some data and just keep one point in mind that okay if you have one gb data one gigabyte data and if you have a link which has one gbps speed okay one gbps speed and one gigabyte data how much time it will take for you to transfer this data in this link many people will say one second which is wrong because this is byte and this is bit so basically it will take eight seconds. So just keep that point in mind. You will be able to calculate it. It is not a big deal. Then Kafka, there was a question. Then S3 transfer acceleration, multi-part upload. All these points had questions. Then DynamoDB auto scaling related. You had to choose between the on-demand mode and provisioned mode. You had to choose. There were two, three questions. Then RDS, Aurora, multi-region, multi-site. There were two, three questions related to that. RDS proxy and what is the use of RDS proxy? You need to know. Athena partition date time based. There was a question on that. So basically, how do you speed up the query which you make on S3 using Athena? Then MongoDB, DocumentDB, there were questions. Key spaces and Cassandra, there was question. Cross region retriplica, there was question. Then data exchange, I mentioned about it. So if you don't know, just ensure that you know what is data exchange. EMR, there were questions. Athena, okay, I mentioned already. Redis, MCAST, there were questions. Redshift cluster scaling, there was a question. Then SMB protocol related questions was there. Kinesis data firehose, Kinesis stream related questions were there. IoT, IoT device gateway related questions were also there. The networking you need to be thorough with direct connect gateway. There were a couple of questions. There were questions on transit gateway, 
NAT gateway, VPC endpoint, definitely a couple of questions were there. Shared VPC, VPC peering, cloud VPN, there was one question. And connecting two regions, there were a couple of questions related to that. Then private hosted zone was also included. AWS organizations related some seven, eight questions were there. So I'm not saying there were direct questions about AWS organizations, but you need to understand AWS organizations and SCP and multiple accounts, how it works, how the cross account role works, etc. to answer these questions. So this is very important, very, very important. Ensure that you are thorough with that. AWS principal org ID condition key related one question was there. Then organization account access role, there was a question. Service catalog portfolio related, there were two or three questions basically. So ensure that you are thorough with this area. Then compute and messaging reserved instance, how do you extend the RI duration? There was a question. Compute savings plan, there was a question. Then API gateway, a couple of questions were there. Regional endpoint, ECS networking, bridge mode, AWS VPC mode, there was a question. Then Lambda reserved current and currency, stateful applications, a couple of questions. SSM patch manager was also covered. Then Lambda inside a VPC, how do that communication happen? Lambda, how can it communicate with Dynamo DB. Then network load balancer and static IP related. I will not go into the details, but just ensure you know uh, the relation. Gateway load balancer, how, do, how it is configured, how it is used, you should know. NLB, LB combination, why is it used, you should know. Then round robin, least outstanding request routing and flow hash routing. You should know which one is used with which type of load balancer. Path based routing, you should know. Then SQS, a couple of questions were there. Security related web ACL how to block traffic from a country that kind of question was there active directory saml back attribute based access control session tags there was question multi-region key x509 certificate was also covered elastic disaster recovery was covered rto rpo there was question there was a question related to aws backup cost management was covered in terms of tagging strategy there was a question cost chargeback etc you need to ensure that you know these topics well so i'll end this part with some general tips you can look for keywords of course this is nothing rocket science everybody tells you this there are these keywords like cost effective highly available durable less management overhead solution with least effort etc please look for that and then from your practice test you should get the connection between the answer and these keywords then it will be easy for you to handle in the final exam and these keywords will actually hold the clue when two answers are very close and be thorough with your multi-AZ setups inter-region replication backups etc because there are several questions which test your understanding of how to build the high availability and disaster recovery plans and a comparatively large number of scenarios involved aws organization which i mentioned already be thorough with that topic basically how the cross account role scp etc works there were a number of scenarios which involved hybrid cloud architecture on premises plus aws so you should know about the vpn cloud vpn site to site vpn direct connect transit gateway direct connect gateway virtual private gateway virtual interfaces what type of interface used is used in which scenario public or private or transit virtual interfaces you should be clear about that and during the exam this is just test suggestion you can decide for yourself you may skip long questions or multi-answer questions in the first pass and you can come back to them later and to give you some more reference material in case if you need i had actually done another video about how to prepare for solution architect associate exam in that i had mentioned a number of preparation material and i'll give the link to the video here you can go to that video and look at those links which i have given in the description and you may want to reuse some of those links I'll keep uploading useful videos. Please consider subscribing to my channel. I wish you all the very best for your exam. Thank you. Bye.